Forgive me if I uh, sound a little bit rough in this video. I have been coming down with the cold. So I have been. That's why I've uh, busted out the laugh mic so you can actually hear me. No, my voice sounded pretty quiet for a change. Who knew? But yes, I hope you're all keeping well today and I hope you're all keeping safe. Now for today's video, I wanted to touch on a subject that to some photographers, this may sound a little bit boring. To others, this is probably the most stressful part of their photography journey. But to me, it's probably the most relaxing part. And that's, that's a bit of a stretch to say when it comes to this sort of process. And yeah, this part I actually find really relaxing. And this is where I'm taking the time to edit my photographs and get the certain look that I want out of my shots. There's nothing I enjoy more than whenever it's like a cold, glum night. Like, I mean, right now it's cold, it's snowing in Northern Ireland. Uh, but I just love like being tucked up in bed or sitting downstairs, popping up on YouTube and checking out different photographers like Mark Denny where they're showing their editing process, how to make one photograph go from this to this. And these sort of topics are something I get asked a lot on my photography journey as well. I mean, on my channel here, I've done different tutorials and different editing software videos to help you kind of understand how you can get one photo looking like another or what different editing softwares will do to you. But today I just kind of wanted to strip it back and just sort of give you a general rundown on my own editing process and show you what I want to get out of a photograph and how I can make one photo look for like from one side to another. And don't get me wrong, this is something I have worked on for a very, very, very long time. And this is by no means final. My editing style changes all the time. I love going back over old photographs especially and just seeing what I can do because what I would have edited at the time, I can then see what I do now and just, I do, I, I, yeah, I really do just love the editing sort of side of things, as sad as that sounds. But yeah, for today's video, you get to delve into my own workflow. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to show you everything that I do because I don't want to bore you and I don't want to spend forever editing this video, but I want to just give some general guidelines on what I would do with approaching a shot. So I've I've got Lightroom open here. So Adobe Lightroom Classic is my main editing software. I do all my editing on that, have done for years. And I've got a music shot, a landscape shot, and a portrait photo. And I just want to take today's video to show you how I approach each of these photographs and what I do in between them to get the final look that I really want. First and foremost, before I get editing, I naturally want to upload my photographs. For today's video, I'm doing something a bit different. Normally, I put all my photos and do all my work off an external hard drive, but for the shots that I've picked out, I've actually just built up some smart previews on my laptop, so that way I don't have to burn this here a wee bit, but I nine times out of 10 work off one of these guys. This is just a normal hard drive. If you've got a solid state drive where there's no moving parts, it's a lot faster. I would recommend putting all your work off the computer. So then that way, not only is it backed up, but it means that your main hard drive on the computer, whether it's a Mac or a Windows, isn't getting clogged up with thousands upon thousands of photos, especially if you're shooting raw and it's clogging up all your memory. So yeah, I, I work off these guys. This is one of the lacy hard drives that I currently use at the moment. I'm also in this video using something that I use for editing from time to time, and that is the Loop Deck Live. So this is just a little sort of mini tablet that I have connected up to my laptop and to Lightroom, where it has little dials and I can edit using it rather than using the sliders and the trackpad on my Mac. It just means I have a separate sort of device. It's really handy. Down the line, might do a video, might do a review on this here just to show my overall thoughts. If I have done it already, you'll probably find it in the link in the top right hand corner. But yeah, you'll find most of the editing I'm going to do in this video will be using the loop deck and a little bit of just playing with the sliders and all here and there. But enough about me, let's get cracking in the Lightroom. <laughs> I'm 
So I've got Lightroom Classic open here. And like I say, I've got a music shot. I've got a landscape photo and I've got a portrait. So the reason why you're seeing two is you're seeing the before and you're seeing the after. So let's open up the music photo. So this is of a band, Mastodon, performed in Belfast a good few years back. This is just the original straight out of camera raw shot. So when I'm looking at this photograph, I want to see what all I can take away, what all I can work with, because you notice here that we've got this, this like really mad highlight going on and there's a lot of greens. So I want to see what I can do with all this here. So whenever I go and start developing, so I'll hit D or I'll hit the develop part on my loop deck or just go to develop over in the top corner. I'm a bit of a cheater. <laughs> I will admit this, I like to be a little bit lazy. Before I used to you know, play with sliders a lot more, whereas now I've gotten kind of a bit lazy. But to be honest, this has really helped me in my editing process because it's um, helped me understand what all might I need to do and what I might not need to do. So anytime I start editing a photograph, I always hit the auto tone just to see what Lightroom is going to give me. And then I can mess around from there. So I'll spend quite a lot of time in the basic panels. So for here, if I cut down highlights, I maybe want to cut down that uh, highlight in the top right hand corner, bring out the shadows a little bit more, just a wee bit. Blacks, tone those down, exposure, maybe brighten them up a little bit and all here. So most of the work I'm gonna probably do around here. White balance, might change that a wee bit. I might come back. So the, this is what I'm starting off with, just um, to get myself going. Uh, but this I'll always keep coming back to and changing. What I always like to do with music shots is I like to peel back the layers of color. And what I mean by that is I love to just strip back each color and then build it up bit by bit and see what sort of colors are unnecessary to the photo or what colors I can make stronger. So I don't have very many presets set up, but the one preset I do is no saturation HSL. So I'll tap that there. And if I go to the HSL panel, all the saturation sliders are completely toned down. So what I then want to do is take each one bit by bit and find out what colors are unnecessary to this photo or what colors I can make a lot stronger. So now I always generally like to work from the bottom magenta all the way. Some people like to go the other way around, but let's see, let's start to bring all this here. So there's only like a little bit of magenta. So I'll probably keep that really low, like a 90. It might be the same for purple. There's a little bit more purple. So I'll not go all the way down, maybe go to about 70. Then what I'll do is just keep on working my way up. So yeah, got a wee bit of a base point and all here with my HSL. See where I'm gonna go from here. Next I'll go to the tone curve. And I always like to play about with this here just to see. I like quite a matte effect to my photos, so I'll bring up my blacks in the shadows and just see what I can make quite subtle and quite dark at the same time. So you can see it's quite matty near the knees. And then if I bring up the highlights, just that little bit more. So you can see already just the attention's being drawn away from the guitar and more to the musician himself. So yeah, I'll just keep playing about with these sorts of things here. The one tool I'll always play about with when it comes to music photography is the calibration tool. This again just helps you fine tune those colors a little bit more and just see what sort of details you can get out from it. So again, just gonna go down to calibration and with the little knobs on my loop deck, I'm just gonna play about with different ones here. So the green, it's not really doing too much here. The blue, okay, we're bringing back a bit more of those orangey tones, or going the other way, it's more of a purple. So I'm kind of bringing back those skin tones that were lost. And if I go to red, that's probably a bit too much. So let's just dial that back. So again, this is something I'll keep playing with as I go along. I have different sort of sharpening presets set up. I have my main sharpening where all this is given me. If I go to the sharpening panel, I go amount 80, radius and detail, I keep them in neutral and then masking, I'll play about with a little bit. So then that way I can say where I want the sharpness to play about in the most. 
because music shots are also generally quite grainy sometimes i'll also put in a bit of a noise reduction so uh, working with the 100 rule i've got 80 on the amount with the sharpening so then i'll add a 20 on the noise so then again i still have a nice sharp shot but it's also nice and smooth because we've cut out a lot of that noise and then of course i want to take out some of those parts up the top here so i'll go to cropping i like working with a 4x5 for most things because for the likes of instagram and also plus makes everything a little bit tighter here and there other times i like to work by 16 by 9 but you know i play about with these just to see what sort of different sort of style of shot i can get and all out of it and then whenever i go to the final shot you can see here we've got quite a good bit of contrast going on again a lot of those colors have been cut down what all did I do elsewhere? So saturating, yeah, very similar to what I had before. Maybe played about with a few wee things here, like the calibration and all. So yep, yeah, there's lots of different things that I'll play about. Again, I didn't want to like show everything that I do because secrets, spoilers. <laughs> but I just wanted to show you like my general base point whenever it comes to starting editing a music shot and just seeing, especially whenever it comes to all the colors, because there's always a lot of colors going on at a gig. Um, what can be the strongest color might not be what you want to take over your shot. So that's why I like doing the kill all the saturation in HSA and bring it up bit by bit so then that way I can discover what colors are necessary or what colors were being lost that I can then bring back again so yep it's it's just going to be a build up here and there so next I want to move on to a landscape style shot and some of the things I did in the music photo I'll probably bring it into most of my landscape but not all of them but let's just have a look and see what all we can do with a photo that I've got picked out here so this was just taken up um, near in Shabby off the church in Downpatrick and all here so we've got some really nice reflections this was early evening so you can notice that we've got a bit of a sunset going on here so let's see what all we can do here so again autotone just to see what sort of a base point I can bring in here. I'll bring up the shadows and tone down the highlights. Yep, most people don't generally like minus 100 plus 100. I do for most cases because I kind of like that HDR look sometimes. <laughs> so I do. So again, it's just going to be a matter of just building along here and there. We're getting a wee bit bluey here. So what I might do is just want to help those sunsetty tones so just bringing them all in there what i'll then do is crop might work with a 16 by 9 or even a 16 by 10 ratio just to tighten in that shot a little bit more straighten it up a wee bit here and there not quite like that but maybe like that so so far so good we've got something here Go on down to the tone curve. I want to again bring in that sort of muddy look. I love bringing in vignettes into my photographs. So let's see what that's going to do. So a mount midpoint. I'll play about with these as I go along. Feather. So just a nice bring in a dark edge here and there. So I've got a nice base point to this photograph. So what I'll then want to do with this photo is again it's all about the layers and building up what I want to stand out the strongest so for this photo the part that I really want to bring out the most is the sky so the best thing about Lightroom nowadays since all their most recent updates is that they have the masking options and this has just really changed the way I edit because if we have a little look here if I hit M or if I go to this top corner here and if I create a mask you've got different options of select subjects select sky select objects blah 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 so for this I want to select the sky and this artificial artificial intelligence also picks out what all's within the sky so you can see we've got a bit of masking all going on here and if I start editing away it's only editing a part of the sky so I want to darken down these clouds a little bit and maybe add a little bit of dehaze just to just to give a little bit of a punch so I do just to help bring out some detail here and there not too much maybe add a little, just a tiny bit more warmth so yeah we have a little bit going on there I'll keep working away on this until I get a shot that looks like this so 
This is the final edit of this here, so we've got a nice crop going on. We brightened up the church here. I think I might have said castle in the previous cup, I do apologize. Uh, but we've got the church. I cleared out some of the um, things that are sort of taking the eye away in the foreground. There was a bird up around here I took away. But you can see we've got that nice sunset -y look going on with the tones. I added my sharpness. I don't think I toned down the clarity. Oh, I actually did. Sometimes I'll tend to do this. I'll go minus 20 on the clarity and plus 20 on the texture, but keep my sharpening all the same, just to either soften out the mid-range uh, details and add a little bit more to the smaller details. So lastly, I've got a portrait shot. So let's see what I'll do to this photograph and see how I can make this portrait pop. So this is a photo of my friend Rachel. We did a photo shoot up in Belfast Castle. Hi Rachel, hope you're watching this. If you want to check out her stuff, she I'll pop the links into the description all about her. She's a wee ledge. I expect uh, money for the plug, Rachel. <laughs> So yeah, let's uh, go into this photo. So again, just standard stuff. I'll do my auto tone here and there and see what all I can work with. Maybe not bring the highlights down as much. So we want to have a little bit here and there. Shadows, I quite like the shadow that's going on here. So I kind of want her to get a wee bit lost in that. Tones, I love playing with the, the matte look for portrait work, especially for this type of shot where it's a wee bit like fashionable here and there so let's put all that in white balance see what a daylight might do nah, it didn't really change too much and then i'm gonna crop do like an 8 by 10 sort of crop here and there and just again keeping it all nice and tight because we don't want the staircase being the main focus rachel is the main focus so what I'll then want to do next is, this is um, how I'll generally edit portraiture skin. So going back to the AI masking from Lightroom, before I used to sit for hours on end with the brush, whereas now what I can do is I can select the person and what Lightroom is going to do is it can go to the face, the body, you can go to lips, hair, teeth, so on and so forth. So for this shot, I don't want to do too much. I'm going to go to the face and the skin and we'll create separate masks. Her skin is generally pretty nice, but I do want to make it just that little bit softer. Most people tend to go to the likes of Photoshop for this type of thing where they could spend, again, hours on end, just trying to make the skin look perfect. I still keep everything within Lightroom, so I've just found a system that works for me and that's all within masking, especially with the masking being so much better as it as it is so what I'll always do with portraits is if I have the face skin here I'll go down to clarity and texture so clarity I just want to pull that back just a little bit and go to about minus 40 same with the texture so you can see that's softening out the skin just that little bit here now I don't want to do too much because I don't want to make everything so blurry and so flat so when we see it on seeing it off seeing with the likes of the body skin what i want to then do is just do the same idea and that's how i'll generally approach a portrait shot now you can then see there's like little strands of hair here and there that i want to take out so this this is where it can get a little bit time so consuming with portraits so i'll spend some time with this here but along the way I want to have a look at all the different tones that I can bring out. So if we're playing with calibration, if I go with the blue, I'm helping bring out those skin tones a little bit more here and there. So it's all about just doing these little build-ups here and there. I've got something already and it looks like this. So you can see as we go just that little bit closer to the shot, I was able to clear out all the different baby hairs and all that were just starting to be a little bit distracting. What I did also did as well was played about with the color grading where I added a wee bit of a blue tone just to help sort of add a nice something something to this photo. Matte, we're still keeping it quite matty looking. I try not to do too much whenever it comes to editing. Some people like to spend forever, some people don't. Some people just like what comes straight out of the camera and that's fine. I just wanted to spend a day to just show you just how I approach different photographs and what you can then see 
from here on in as I build, take away all the different layers and build it up slowly. So what do you think? Do you like some of the edits that I've done here? Do you think there's anything else that I could have done? Well, it'd be great to hear of your opinion. So let me know in the comments down below. It'd be great to hear what you think. And it'd be great to know how you approach your photographs whenever it comes to editing as well, because we're all different. We all see photos completely differently. And that's the amazing thing about photography. It's just what all we can do and how our eyes see stuff. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful and enjoyable for you. If it was, do like, share, subscribe, hit that wee bell icon so that you can stay up to date with future videos. It's always greatly appreciated that you come and check out the content. You have no idea how much I love it. So thank you all so much. But I do hope you really like this here. But until then, I'm going to go and uh, blow my nose from this coat. <laughs> There's an image you really wanted. But yeah, take care, everybody.